Booker T. McDaniels possessed one of Negro baseball's most fierce fastballs of the 1940s. Said to have thrown nearly as hard as the great Satchel Paige, McDaniels' aggressive style of pitching achieved him success in the uppermost echelons of baseball outside the major leagues. During an era of wartime hardships and fundamental changes to the game, McDaniels became a strikeout champion, an all-star in three different countries, and a pioneer of baseball's integration. McDaniels was born in 1913 and raised in the rural Arkansas River Valley, near the community of Blackwell, or Blackville, in Conway County, Arkansas. As a youth, he and his brothers helped support their widowed mother by laboring on local farms in the fertile river bottoms. Over time, McDaniels grew to be tall, athletic, and powerful. In the 1930s, McDaniels began pitching semi-professionally in Arkansas before he was discovered by the Kansas City Monarchs, the era's premier team in the Negro American League. He debuted in 1940 and soon helped the Monarchs form one of black baseball's most dominating pitching staffs, which in short time led Kansas City to multiple pennants and the 1942 Negro World Series championship. Though he was often overshadowed by his larger-than-life teammate Satchel Paige, McDaniels was arguably the Negro American League's leading pitcher by 1943. His fastball was at times wild and troublesome for catchers, yet enough to best black baseball's greatest hitters in many clutch moments. His achievements in the Negro Leagues earned him selections to multiple North-South All-Star games as well as a chance to pitch in the 1945 East-West All-Star Classic. Black Baseball's National Showcase created to parallel the Major League's All-Star Game. Playing in front of more than 30,000 fans at Comiskey Park in Chicago, McDaniels was hit hard by his superstar opponents, but maintained the West team's lead long enough to help secure victory. Later that year, McDaniels began a transition from American baseball to Latin baseball, where for the next half decade, the temperate weather south of the border would allow him to play nearly year-round. He began by journeying to the Caribbean to play in the Cuban Winter League, where in February 1946, he was one of two pitchers named to the league's all-star team. Soon, McDaniels and a large number of other Americans were recruited to play in the Mexican League, which offered impressive salaries to both blacks and whites alike, but particularly appealed to Negro leaguers seeking a lifestyle free from segregation. McDaniels signed to play with the San Luis Potosi Tuneros and quickly became one of the league's most sensational performers. He became known throughout Mexico for his powerful pitching style, which earned him the nickname Belezos, or gunshot. In July, he was named the starting pitcher in the Mexican League All-Star Game, and by the year's end, he'd struck out more batters than any pitcher in the league. McDaniel's lively career in Latin baseball continued for two more years, during which he spent the warm Mexican summers pitching for the Veracruz Azules and the Mexico City Diablos Rojos, while playing winter ball in Cuba between seasons. Yet while McDaniels was playing abroad, the game in the U.S. was changing. In 1947, baseball's long-established color barrier was broken by McDaniels' former Monarchs teammate, Jackie Robinson, initiating the beginning of baseball's gradual integration, as well as the decline of the Negro Leagues. Meanwhile, many players who had jumped to Mexico began returning to teams in the U.S. following the removal of bans and blacklists against those who had played outlaw ball south of the border. The changes prompted McDaniels to return to Kansas City in the spring of 1949 and rejoin the Monarchs. The move drew the attention of Major League scouts, who soon took a serious interest in McDaniels. 
On June 10th, he was signed by the Los Angeles Angels, a farm club of the Chicago Cubs in the Pacific Coast League, baseball's highest level of competition outside the major leagues. He became the team's first black player, as well as the league's first black pitcher. During his first month with the Angels, McDaniels impressed, winning five of his first six games. His performance soon suffered, however, as a result of control issues, as well as a lack of support from the Angels, who finished dead last in the league. Still, McDaniels proved to be Los Angeles' best starter during the remainder of the year. After pitching in Puerto Rico during the winter, McDaniels returned to the Angels for the 1950 season. It shortly became apparent, however, that McDaniels' age and aggressive style of pitching were wearing on him. Now 36 and past his prime, McDaniels fell to overpower hitters as once before. Assigned to pitch primarily out of the bullpen, his performance was weak nearly all year. And before the start of the next season, Los Angeles chose to part ways with him. McDaniels briefly attempted an unsuccessful comeback in Mexico in 1951, but ultimately found himself back in Kansas City, playing the final two seasons of his career in the rapidly declining Negro Leagues, whose heyday, like McDaniels, was now past. He played his final season in 1952, and afterward lived and worked in Kansas City the rest of his life. He retired from a local elevator company in 1969, and died five years later at age 62. He was buried in his hometown in Arkansas.